Ads not read by me, Mary Payne, don't necessarily reflect the views of Pink Shade. If you'd like to listen to ad free, you're going to go on over to Supercast or Patreon, and you can find the links to Pink Shade Prime at pinkshadepodcast.com. Hey, everybody. We love that song so much. I wanted to play it twice. It did. No, no, that's not true. Did you did you pay attention this time, Keisha, or were you looking at your phone? I, I wasn't looking at my phone, but I was continuing watching the Twilight Saga. I watch it almost every other weekend. Okay. So I, w- I was just, I was watching that. Okay. You were You've got Robert Pattinson is on your screen, Kristen Stewart. Yeah, don't talk about Robert Pattinson. I know how you feel about him. Mm-hmm. And he still has one of the prettiest smiles in Hollywood. Ew. No. Mm -mm. Think what you want. He does. And when he smiles, oh, his whole face just lights up. I love it. Does he he smile a lot in that movie? I thought he was a sad vampire. He is, but whenever you catch him smiling, it's it's a beautiful one. All right. Unforgettable. I'll uh I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it. Everybody, but just got their so everyone things. knows, I am one hundred percent Team Jacob, through and through. Like this is how much I love this franchise. I have mm-hmm. like the action figures. Um, when I was still a social worker, we had Twilight Book Club. Mm-hmm. We were there opening night of every single movie. Read all the books. Have multiple copies of the books. Yeah. Okay. For those of you I'm that not are into Twilight, <laughs> <laughs> those of you into Twilight, reach out to Keisha that y'all could bond. Um, yes. I, I think, I think also because you're 43, I'm 54. So perhaps I was too old. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I was like post college age when these movies came out and maybe you were still college age. So no, that's- because I had Skylar and hmm. I was too old to be reading the books when I read the books. Oh, okay. I was trying to help, but I guess not. No, no, it's just me. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm, Listen, I'm sure. yeah, you're not alone. Lots of people yeah. enjoy the twilight series. Never read one book. Uh, oh all I know. my God. I know. I know. I'm not into it. But I also said I was never going to read Harry Potter because I wasn't interested. And then Anna, when she was in fifth grade, was done, had read the whole series. So then when John got to be around fifth grade, he wanted to start reading it. And he mm-hmm. just uh, just wasn't at that reading level. You know, he just... Okay. Because it's hard. They're hard books to read. It is. Yes. And uh, so I read every single Harry Potter book out loud to my son. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So I am well versed in Harry Potter, whether I wanted Aren't to be or not. Aren't they magical? They Aren't are they so magical. Yeah. They are. For the last right. movie, we sat in the theater for twelve hours. Uh, why is that? So we could get good. Well, okay. James sat in there twelve hours to make sure mm-hmm. I got good seats. No one got in my seat. Plus, we got there early, and it. it I was there for seven hours. Yeah. But why? When the movie's only like two and a half, three. Yeah, but you have to get there early to make sure you got tickets. This was before you could purchase your tickets uh-huh. online. So yeah, you have to okay. sit there and get, and then you have to sit there and save your spot. But they would let you in that early? Yes, because it was for the last Harry Potter movie. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I've never seen any Harry Potter Harry okay. Potter movie in the theater, just on the TV. Yeah. I'm just. I just <sighs> feel like. I've read all the books and mm-hmm. I've seen most of the movies and mm-hmm. I, I most of them. What do yeah, you I don't know most if I, of them? I don't know if I've seen them all. It's just sort of like if they're on, I'll watch them, but I'm more into the books, I guess. Ugh, I, know. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I, know. I really don't. I just, every week you tell me something new and I'm like, I thought Mary Payne was my cousin from the other tribe, but clearly we're not related at all. <laughs> but that's okay. We can all have, we can all have different things. That's okay. Yes. 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 It's yes, okay. Yes. I will tell you this week on, um, 90 day, the other way, 
that I recorded mm-hmm. with Amy over the weekend, um, the new season. There's a guy on there, um, Brandon, spelled mm-hmm. Brand Dan, Brand Dan, oh. and his girlfriend Mary in the Philippines, and she thinks he looks just like a combination between Justin Bieber and Harry Potter. Did someone she loves- make a meme about that? Because I Probably. that sounds very familiar. Okay, does he look like that? Uh, I could. It's a stretch, but I could see it. I could see it. But you really got to look hard for it. I could see if you're really in love with somebody. And to her, those two things are America, even though it is pointed out to her that Harry Potter is British. Very Um, much. She, um, I don't know, I guess if she, maybe she thinks all American and British guys look alike. I don't know. But he's, he's cute and he does have little round glasses and he does have the same color hair. Um, Okay. What about the Justin Bieber part? N- no, he d- he doesn't have like tattoos up his neck or anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because Justin Bieber's cute. He is an attractive guy, but you, you got to you got to watch um, the new ni- the new season of Ninety Day the other way just because of this couple. It is I, I got to off guy. off the chain whack these two. Really? Yeah. Oh. She um he twenty four seven they're on the phone together twenty four seven they never hang up so he always is just walking around with like a stick with the phone on it so if he's at the dentist the stick just sits right next to him like gets his teeth done if he's they're sleeping the stick is there like they're watching each other like they never get off the phone go into the bathroom so, they watch each other so Skylar was dating this guy mm-hmm. she sure is and he was like that about her and mm-hmm. it was the stupidest thing and we finally told her this is not normal they yeah. would keep the phone asleep yeah or she'd be in a shower and the phone would be on the banister mm-hmm. and he's just waiting i'm like that is i don't know what that's called other than insane i'm like please stop doing this i mean this was like her first real boyfriend yeah so yes she thought that was what you were supposed to do i'm like no it is not what you're supposed to do that yeah it's odd. It's real weird. It's, it's real weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. And people are like, can she hear us? I'm like, yeah, she can hear us, but she just has herself on mute and she's just sitting there watching. It's real weird. That's how they were. It was very, I have no, no, we seriously had to sit her down and have a conversation about it. It's like, this is a come to Jesus moment, young <laughs> child, but we're going to tell, I cannot stand to, I mean, sometimes James is in the same room with me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish you'd go to another room. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's a such thing as too much togetherness. Just, I don't know. That's too much. It's too much. It's but too that's, much. um, that's, uh, a pretty good storyline because it's just so out there. So out mm. there. Hmm. So yeah, we're covering that. And then sometime this week, you'll get an episode with me and Katie of A Date with Dateline about 90 Day UK. We're going to put that over on Pink Shade Prime, which is Patreon and Supercast. Put that over there on the $10 level because it's just a total bonus. So at one time, we're going to be covering three different iterations of 90 Day. It knows um, something. It could be four if we chose to cover The Last Resort, but no way, no how are we covering that bullshit is it bad oh that's the one with um debbie and jovi so it's jovi and yara big Uh ed and liz Um, angela and michael Angela. Um, i don't know why i said debbie i meant angela yes yeah and kalani and swelu and then my understanding is that colt and uh vanessa were on there and he broke his leg on a trampoline and they had to leave so <laughs> he would so break his leg on a trampoline. That's so cold. Like yeah. that wasn't even surprising. Yeah, yeah. Someone sent me a meme about, I think it was big Ed's wedding invitation or something like that. Stop. With all the Stop. information on it. I'm like, he hopes and prays like some type of paparazzi will show up. And it's like on a Tuesday. Well, yes, we get the best rate. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought Sunday, I mean, Friday was a good rate. Or Sunday. Yeah. Is it Sunday? But I'd never heard of Tuesday. Just on Vanderpump Rules, I know that Katie and Tom, uh, got, they got married on a Wednesday because they got the best <laughs> rate. They got, yeah. I got to get off a little bit early today because I got a yes. Wednesday wedding to go to. <laughs> and it was like a destination wedding. So people had to like take off oh, and be gone no. for like three days. <laughs> yes. Like a Wednesday to a Friday. Yeah. That's you still got your whole much. weekend free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see how considerate we are, guys? Oh, so that's what's going on over there. Of course, uh, Amy and I are still covering um, Temptation Island, which means I got to do this. You're not going to tell me. 
sorry. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier than that song. Nothing. I know. Are you- well, you were happy when I guessed who sang it. Yes. I, I like to try to spring that on people, but it's not so springable. But are, are you and James watching it, Temptation Island? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's so good, Keisha. It's so good. Okay, I, I'm going to make you laugh what I have been binging the last two weeks. So right. whenever I go get my hair braided, she always has on like random stuff on Netflix uh-huh. that I would never, ever watch. But then I'm like, you're sitting there for seven hours. You're like, ooh, I like this. Yeah. So she was watching SWAT. I don't know, SWAT. <laughs> SWAT. It's uh, it came on CBS. Shamar Moore. It's about SWAT like from a long, and yeah, from a long time ago. But there's a- it's a remake of it. Okay, all right. Okay, yes, it's a reboot. And I started watching it over there. And as soon as I got home, there it went. And I binge watched it for the last week and a half. Like, no one would guess that I would be watching that show. No, so but Shamar good. Moore is pretty cute. You you forget about his cuteness because the show is just so freaking good it is action-packed so okay all right go watch well, it on netflix if you're looking for a new action series because it's good well much like a vampire series i don't need an action series either um, i love action you do you i know you yeah I, I don't know what it is i've never really liked action stuff i can't even think of one action movie that i liked really john wick never one, watched two, that three four Go no. sit in that corner by your flower wall. <laughs> you have never seen... I mean, sometimes you're in the mood to see one man kill 364 people in 2.2 <laughs> 2 minutes, okay? I did I did see Speed. I saw Speed. Uh, what, what is it saying? Current references only? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mary Payne, Fast and the Furious franchise? Mm-mm, no way. No way. No desire. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. We're about to I, d- hey, again. I saw an interview with the vampire. That's the vampire movie I saw. Great. And, and I think I saw the follow-up. The, the whatever, Lestat. I think I, I saw a couple of those vampire movies because of Brad Pitt, because I love Brad Pitt so much. Well, you know, they created a television show. It came out last year, Interview with the Vampire. It was so freaking good. I heard that was love good. It. I heard it was yeah, like super was sexual, so then that would make me nervous. Oh yeah, it. I mean, it was, but it's still on AMC. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's not that super. I mean, you don't want like a small child in the room, but I wouldn't say super sexual, but it's just got some sex in there. Well, I've been watching season two of The Bear, and I'm about halfway th- done with that, and I finished. Um, I finished the third and final season of Happy Valley, which is on AMC. It's a BBC. That was really great. And um, I don't know so how you like tur- BBC. Some of it. Yeah. I like those British procedurals, right? So if it's like a, like a crime show, but it's like British accents. Yeah. Okay. See, my favorite British television show, it was from years ago. It's called Prime Evil. Okay. That sounds like there's some kind of monster in it dinosaurs things stop like that, stop stop next you're gonna say robots stop there's no ro- robots in it but it's so freaking good i love that show you gotta watch it one day you guys keisha and i it's amazing that we find something to talk about because we really have very different i mean tastes. when we really start thinking about it it's like we are <laughs> and we have the same birth date and everything but i know yeah, yeah. So that's, we we were together, and then something just kind of separates us out there, and it's usually television. <laughs> it is because that's all we have to talk about. Because that's all I do. Oh right. my good lord, that's all same I do. Same, same, same. same. Um, you know, what I did today. I watched uh, Wimbledon. I watched the final match of Wimbledon. I watched that this afternoon, and how was that? We're recording this on Sunday. It was really great. So my son is very into tennis. So he's okay. not he, he's not here. He's on a a, a church trip. So I was mm-hmm. texting him some like updates. Um, and then the guy that won. So Djokovic is the guy who's won three years in a row. And he, at, at the last kind of bit of it, they were like head to head, head to head. And then this other guy, um, Alcaraz, this young guy, he ended up winning. So it's like when it showed like the leaderboard, you know, it was like 2019, 2021, 2020. It's a like Djokovic, 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 and then they had already taken his name off and put on Dang. Uh, and put on um, Alcaraz for the winner. But I mean, he's like the difference between like age 20 and like 36. 
So That's the young guy. Difference yeah. right there. I mean, think about what you could do when you were in your 30s compared to what you could do now. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. And that Djokovic, I sent John a note and I said, Djokovic, he's big mad. I said, he broke his racket. Like he met, he oh, lost like oh. a set point. He got his racket and hit it on the side of the net, like the wooden post and splintered the net and his tennis racket went to like 10 pieces and threw it and he got like a fine yeah. or whatever. Oh yeah, I wrote big my, mad. Yeah, so he's big mad. My son wrote back, he's always big mad. He's always big mad. That's why people don't like him. I well, side like, note, oh. if you do like tennis, I just read a book. Mm-hmm. And it revolves around tennis. It is called Apples Will Fall Okay, by Leanne Moriarty. Okay. I'm sure I'm saying, pronouncing it wrong. No, I love and Leanne Moriarty. Much. Okay, yes. It is so good. Like, I was like, please don't talk to me. I'm in the middle of this family drama. In this okay. book, uh, it's a good one. Okay. Um, all right. That, I, love, I love her books. And yes. no, look, we've now found something in common. We've, we've, yes, we, we, we split and now we've come back together. Come back together. Yes. 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 Look yes. at us. Look at us. All right. Well, let's get recap into this show because it's, it's got, it was kind of a fast show. It always is, but it, yeah, it just sort of moved the ball just a little. It wasn't like a super right. explosive um, episode. It will be next week if Harold gets his heart broken and we all have to uh, storm the TLC offices. Oh man. <sighs> it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. This so we'll start. We'll start with sweet Harold. Harold goes to see Katarina uh, in her office and tells her, "Like, yeah, I totally hit it off with Michaela. She's pretty. She's talented. She's tall. She's mm-hmm. kind. She's warm-hearted, and she likes me." And <laughs> Katarina goes, "Well, that's the most important thing." And he yes, says, it "Yeah." Is. <laughs> and the way he keeps saying, he goes, "We had a spectacular date night and morning." And the way he kept making it sound like they had spent the night together, and you can see Kevin yeah. was like, "What? Y- what? Y'all did do? Uh, okay, yeah." He totally made it seem like that. Yeah, I, but I don't know if he was meaning to do that because she—you could tell she kept going. Well, she kept like, "The producers uh, didn't tell me that," you know. Right. <laughs> so he says, "Well." We did. We, we kissed on our date and, and I felt like I missed the cues, but then she was leaning in. And so we kissed and then she invited me on this morning yoga date. And she says, so Harold, you feel like, do you want to go on any more dates? And he says, he's 99.99% sure he wants no more matches. And he's going to go the next day to see her at her home and meet her family and hopes they move to the next level. And he says, I've got to make a grand gesture of love and commitment. Yeah. Katarina's like, okay, Harold. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I would have just gone for like a very nice bouquet of flowers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, um, maybe a, a cute charm bracelet or. Yeah, I feel like just going like there that. is a grand gesture. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You got a point. Yeah, a nice yeah. dessert or something like that, you know. Nice uh, meal. Maybe yeah. A, maybe a new yoga mat for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he uh, goes to meet Katerina at this jewelry store. And um, she says, Harold, you look so snazzy. You have on some of your new clothes. And I see you washed your suspenders. Yeah, I fell out when she said that. I'm like, I didn't notice that the other ones were dirty, but But I'm kind of not surprised. They must have been dirty close up, Uh don't you think? So he goes, no, as a matter of fact, these are brand new. And she was like, well, they're great. They look like rulers. And (laughs) he says, well, the reason we're here is I'm thinking when I go see Michaela, I might propose. And I was thinking to do that, I'm going to need a ring. Now, Katerina says, this does happen a lot when clients live far away and come to visit. And they they think they have to move fast because they're there for a short period of time. But none of them have ever made this decision this fast. Two days. Two, Two days. days. So no. Katarina says, you've only met each other twice. So you don't have to do this today. You don't have to buy a ring today. And right. he says, well, I'm, you're not making me change my mind, but I'm hesitant because we had those two good dates, but I haven't heard a lot from her on text because she's working. And he says, it was interesting. He said, she has her everyday routine of getting up and working and all that, but she hasn't fit texting me back into her routine. Which is more of a reason why you should not ask that person to marry you. Like, yeah, yeah. You're not in her life, in her life yet. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. 
And, totally. and that kind of made me nervous when he said that about the texting because to me, if I really, really like you, I will damn near get fired from a job trying to text you back. You know, I will too. So, I'll be taking a lot of bathroom breaks. A lot of breaks. Text you yes. back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he says, um, I, I do worry that we communicate better in person and it won't be mm-hmm. so easy on the phone because you can't really read somebody's face or expression on the phone um, when you're texting. So it's harder to, you know, to communicate. Well, we have so, FaceTime. FaceTime. Well, let me say, she's not going to text him. She's definitely not going to FaceTime him. Yeah. I'm worried. I'm really, really worried, Mary Payne. I am too. I don't know. Yeah. So... Katarina says, well, listen, I'll tell you this, and maybe this will help you. Michaela told me she does really like you and wants to see you again and is happy you're coming to visit. So that's all very positive. So now the jeweler shows him this 14 karat gold ring with Moldavite. And they talk about Moldavite being a a, a gem, a fossil, a rock, whatever yeah. the hell it is, a geology term um, that is only found or mined specifically in the Czech Republic. And it, this ring is about $800. So Harold's like, oh. He starts know. sweating a little bit. I'm yeah. like, how much were you planning on spending for the engagement ring, Harold? Like, yeah, I, I don't. dollars was a steal. Pretty good price. So Harold says yeah. um, he doesn't want to overdo it. Um, mm-hmm. And he does worry that he gets this ring that he's pushing it. And she goes, but you could also buy the ring. And then if the moment doesn't present itself or feel right, like you don't have to, you don't have to propose. Go through. Yeah. And he says, oh gosh, I guess I'm going to have to just, I'm going to walk around the block and think about it. I have to clear my head. So he walks around the block and he's like putting his head down and he's just (laughs) popping those suspenders. He's really thinking and. People are rocking around him and the camera crew because he's like right there, uh, all in the way. (laughs) And I did wonder about that a lot when people are just walking around yep. the streets of like this, you know, and they're in Prague, they're in a, a, a touristy town with a camera yeah. crew. People are like, what's happening here? You know? Yeah. yeah. Me, I'd be like, excuse me, what's happening here? Um, right. So, can, can I get on that camera time? You, yeah. You need I'll extra? sign a waiver. I'll sign a yeah, waiver. Yeah. Immediately. No problem. So in his talking head, he says, you know, what I don't want is her to forget about me. And sometimes what happens is it gets slow replying to messages. Then the messages stop. Then you get totally ghosted. And that breaks my heart. He's had this happen before. I mean, he's got one thing going for him. I think she wants to come to America. So Mm -hmm. that could be her ticket here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but. It's, I could tell by his body language and his facial expressions that it's not going good. And yeah. it may be going a little bit worse than what he expressed. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe he feels like, you know, out of sight, out of mind kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't get the feeling like she's dying to come to America. But obviously, if she's doing this dating experience with this matchmaker that matches up foreign men. With Americans. Then, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, she could do lots of yoga in Los Alamos, Alamos, wherever the hell he lives, New Mexico. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You could do lots of yoga there out in the desert. Mm -hmm. All right. Get a good sweat. Let's let's move on to Chad. Uh, Chad says uh, he knows he shared too much information on his date with Maria. (laughs) Now he's gone on a date with a girl named Baba. Mm-hmm. Baba. I wrote it down. B A E dash B A H. Baba. What What was her real name though? I can't uh, remember did, what her real name was. I can't either. It was like it was like Alejandra, like something like that. Maybe it wasn't like, something like yeah. It was something it, with it the, didn't go it, with the nickname. It didn't go with B E B A. So um, they meet up, and she's like. You, my name is Beba. And he goes, oh, okay, nice to meet you. She's like, you have to call me Beba. And he was like, okay, I just did. Shit, sorry. She's um, aggressive. She's aggressive. And Juan yeah. says, this is a good date for Chad because she's a spontaneous beauty queen. And hopefully she'll be able to bring out his personality because she's very extroverted. And um, she asks how old he is. And he says, well, I'm 38. And she says, I'm 26. You could be my sugar. Like my sugar daddy. He's like, it's okay. Sugar daddy, honey. <laughs> okay. And uh, it seems like they're kind of talking 
past each other. Like they don't quite understand. Yes. Kind of, yeah. Kind of like yeah. the, with the other girl. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says that uh, he just, he's trying to say Bonita, Mui, Bonita. Yeah. And she's like, what? What? Oh, pretty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did, didn't she like say her name again? Like, no, it's my name, <laughs> whatever yeah. it was. And he yeah. not, it's not Bonita Applebaum. That's like a old, old, old rap song right there. But I was surprised <laughs> she didn't pick up on what he was trying to say when he said Bonita. Cause, yeah. Cause it didn't sound like anything to, else. But, I mean, yeah. that's how I would say it here Me too. in Texas. Texas. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so he's just kind of looking at the ground a lot and says he's he's shy. He's shy around yeah. good-looking girls. So Beba says, well, he's a real cowboy. He's tall with the muscles. He seems like a nice guy. Let's, you know, let's see if I could get him out of his shell a little bit. So they're walking around, and it starts to rain, and they start to get this treat, which is like a caramelized milk, which I can't decide yeah. if that sounds good or gross. It but- doesn't sound good to me at all. But I was like, and apparently it wasn't good by judging by how the face he made. He was like, what is this? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so he says, you know, he's shy and he's tense and he doesn't know what to do about this picnic. And she goes, right. all right, well, now it's raining. Should we go back to Medellin or should we go to your hotel for a drink? What should we do? And he goes, okay. And she goes, should you call the driver? He goes, all right. She goes, so are we going to do that? And he goes, sounds good. She's just. And like, she's like, do you have your phone? It was like a mother yeah. talking to their son before he left the house. Do you have your keys, your cell phone? Do you have on sunscreen? And all? yeah, yeah, get out your phone and do it. And do it. Like, don't just think about doing it. It's it's raining. He called the yes. fucking driver right now. <laughs> so she says. So um, while we're waiting, you know, we can talk. And so, what do you like to do for fun? You like to go out like clubbing and dancing. And he goes, well. I guess on Sundays they like to go to church. And I can't believe you didn't say, and I like to mow my grass. But I mean, that may have excited her a little bit more than going to church every Sunday. Maybe he should have said both. Um, yeah. She led with clubbing, dancing, and drinking. And he says, go to church and mow my grass. This girl is yeah. not going to do well in his hometown. No. But then, didn't someone message you about... Or they made a post about where he really lives and it's not that far from the city. Yeah, they said it's not that far. And that it's, it, they'd like, where the heck does he live? Because if he lives in uh, Pleasant View, Tennessee, it's not that far from Nashville, I think they said, which of course is a huge city. So and, so that's just like where I live. I live in Dickinson slash Leak City, but we say Houston because it's the big city right next to us. It's like, yeah. You hop on a freeway, drive for 15 minutes, you're in Houston. So that's what I'm assuming it's like for him. But apparently he doesn't make that 15-minute drive to the city. No, he does not. No, he does not. So they get her in an ITM and say, so how's it going? She was like, "Uh, (laughs) this is hard. Uh, He's hard to talk to. But um, listen, I know that I'm a good catch, and I need somebody fun and relaxed like me. So maybe maybe I can, you know, basically I can get him drunk. So she says – so, uh, you don't like to dance? And he goes, no, I, I ain't never been good, no dancing. And she says, um, come here, I'm going to show you how you do it. So I, she probably puts on like music on her iPhone, but they won't let us hear that, you know? Of course. Yeah. So as they're sort of dancing, she's like, put your hand here, put your hand here. And he goes, I- I'm going to step on your breeches. I'm going to step on your breeches. I was like, oh my God, this guy. <laughs> this guy. You know, he talks like he has dip in his mouth, even though he doesn't. But I think he's yeah. so used to talking like that. That's just like his natural voice now or yeah. how he holds his tongue or uh-huh. something. I'm like, you ain't got dip in your mouth, buddy. You ain't got to talk like you got dip in there, but carry on. But he does. But he always does. You're right. Oh, you think yeah. he does? No, oh, I don't think he has no. to dip in. Yeah. I think that's just the way he talks. Yeah. He's out- yeah, he does. And I wonder too, later on when he says he has to go to the room and change shirts, I wonder if he had to get mm. a quick dip. He's probably Jonesing. Oh, I was thinking it it was because he was wet. Well, I was thinking both. I was thinking he wanted to change shirts and he probably had to get a quick dip because he was probably like oh, dying. Okay. That yeah. probably makes sense. Okay. So he says uh, after the dancing part, they get him on the side and he goes, yeah, I, I, I'm worried about making an ass of myself. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't done any no dancing since like 22 years. And uh, I sure don't want to mess this up because... She's everything, man. She's gorgeous. She's everything I would want. Well, you said that about Maria, too. He sure did. Uh, and I'm like, Chad, you're messing it up by not 
conversing. Don't worry about the lack of dance moves. Like, talk. C- come on. Yeah, talk. yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem to, yeah. So in the car, she says something. And, he, and Juan Pablo was the driver, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, in the car, he's something. And he goes, yeah, I know what you mean, jelly bean. And she goes, yeah. what? <laughs> jelly what do you mean? Jelly bean. And he goes, it's just a saying. And he goes, she goes, I what? And he goes, because it rhymes. You know what I mean, jelly bean? And you see Juan Pablo in the front just He's like giggling. smacking his head like this guy. <laughs> this guy's got no game. He's no game. zero. Zero game. At, and he's cute. And it's yeah. like, dude, you're cute. You've got that going for you. But you know what I mean, jelly bean? I ain't heard that in a long time, Mary Payne. I hadn't heard that in a long time. And also it's interesting yeah. that these women think that like, oh, he's a real American cowboy. You no, know, he's I guess not. just because he's from the South and wears cowboy boots. And he didn't even have the boots on. I hate it when guys have on like their cow- cowboyish pants with tennis shoes. Yeah. Because he had I on tennis too. shoes. I was like, I don't think that's cute at all. Like, just go put on your boots. Come yeah. On. Or put on like some like khaki kind of like jeans pants if you're going to wear tennis shoes. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel exactly the same way. See how we're coming together again? After See, look apart? at us. Look yeah, at us. Uh-huh. We find our way back to each other every time. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to his hotel and they sit down to order a drink. So he says, I'm going to go change my shirt. Now, do you think it's weird that he, first of all, that he had his backpack with him the uh-huh. whole time? Mm-hmm. And then when he went to his room, he didn't take it to like leave it in his room. He's still carrying it around yeah. with him. So I was, I was thinking about that. I was like, okay, does he, is he carrying snacks that were supposed to be used for the picnic? Or yeah, right. Is yeah. there like a blanket in there? Or, I, I didn't get the backpack thing. Even when he walked her out, he had the backpack. I'm like, he still had it. Backpack. Yeah. I, I when he walked her out with the backpack of his own hotel, I was like, where are you going? Yeah. With I your backpack. Know. This is where you're staying. Yeah. I, so I, mean, I noticed too. He goes upstairs to change his shirt, maybe also get a dip. And she mm-hmm. talks to the bartender and says, I'm going to get a whiskey on the rocks. And the the server, the bartender laughs because you want to make it a double. And she goes, yes, can you believe this? I'm on a blind date. Mm-hmm. And she says, he's shy, but he's lovely. And she says, you know, I'm, I'm from the coast. I'm very straightforward, but maybe he just needs some drinks. So he they did. sit down and he did. Yeah. They sit down. She orders him something. I don't know what it was. And they do cheers. And she goes, what's the word? We can get, we can get plastered. <laughs> yeah. She said. But then he He's, messed it up. I'm like. Yeah. He was like, she, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> so she goes, yeah. So we, I did notice he drank a good amount of that whiskey on the rocks. Yeah. Because they showed it one second and then they showed it the next and it was almost gone. I'm like, uh, yeah. homeboy most definitely needed that drink. Uh, He's feeling a little bit better about himself. Yeah, and, the, and then they started talking a little bit more. And it seems to me that just the way the angle of the camera was, she's talking to him, and the camera is right behind the barter. So, so it looks like the three of them are in our conversation. We're talking, yeah. I, I, the bar- I assume or, that the bartender was part of their conversation. Yeah, or the bartender yeah. was just like, I'd like to be on TV. I signed that release. They're going to give me an Amazon gift card. Because that's yeah. what I would do. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too. She's like, let me pull this mask down so you can see my face. Mm-hmm, right. So... He drinks his drink and he gets relaxed. And she says, um, uh, "Do you, you would you want to like see me again?" And he says, "Yeah, he would." So she goes, "Yeah, I'd like to go out um, with him again." Yeah, and she tells the camera, "Like, you know, maybe it's a total match. I don't know. He's cute, mm-hmm. and I think it went well." And then they walk out. He's so, with his backpack. Awkward. Yes. And he's so weird. He goes, "Well, I had fun. Now, be safe. <laughs> Adios, amigos. That's rhymes." <laughs> And uh, and they hug, and he goes, yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I don't always kiss somebody on the first date. I don't know. I didn't want to look like an ass. He's very worried about right. looking like an ass. Yes, while and looking just, like an ass. Yeah, it, but it's like you're dancing, <laughs> kissing, drinking, everything with a backpack on your back. Like, take your backpack yeah, off. Yeah, he does, yeah. Door the Explorer. <laughs> I want a damn backpack. <laughs> backpack. Right. Abuela's house. Okay. All right, let me tell you what, Keisha. 
If you are looking to budget your food expenses this summer, you're going to get more bang for your bite with America's best value meal kit. It's every plate. Okay, every plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping with no hidden fees. So you can count on a great value week after week. Plus, you only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. So how often, uh, Keisha, you go to the store, you buy like a little thing of mayonnaise because you need it for a recipe and then it sits Mm. in your fridge for like two months and then you throw it out often uh, often often in this house yes or like bad. fresh rosemary or something and you use it for one thing and then it just sits there till it goes bad and you throw it away mm-hmm. All the that time. drives me drives me crazy and it happens in our house it's probably happening in my fridge right now so that's why i love every plate they send you exactly what you need and the packaging is sustainable i got my every plate box this week and it's different than some other things because it comes in and it has like a the bottom part is like a cardboard box. It's like a little tray and you pick it up and it's everything in there. It's like your carrots, your onions, everything. It's like, if you, it's like you went to a farmer's market. It's just, mm. and it's beautiful. And I took a picture of it. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. So every plate offsets 100% of their delivery emissions. And that means that their meals have 31% lower carbon footprint on average than supermarket meals of the same amount. Plus, all the packaging are curbside recyclable, like that um, cardboard. You just throw it right in your recycle bin. And I love that you can customize every plate to your liking with options like you can swap out your proteins, you can swap out your sides, add a protein to your veggie. I do that all the time. If something is just veggie, I'll just add some like ground turkey or something. You got to do you, you got to do what works for you. There are 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week, including my favorite 15 minute or less dinners and oven free recipes. So it's easy to find something for every meal of the week. Now, last week they sent me these white pizza type um, flatbreads. So it's like a flat, flatbread, like a white pizza, but it had like chopped up zucchini and tomatoes. So good. Mm. And I've chopped up the zucchini small enough so nobody realized there were zucchini in my family. <laughs> Because I was like, you can't even taste it, and you're getting some nutrition, and I tricked everybody. And uh, everybody loved it, and other than the chopping, it was super fast, and I didn't spend all night in the kitchen. You can get a dollar forty nine per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code PINKSHADE49. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code PINKSHADE49. So one more time, everyplate.com slash podcast. The code is PINKSHADE49, and that is also up to a $110 value. All right, let's go to Susan in New York, from New York, rather. Susan, this week, I got to say something about Susan. Okay. Susan has grown on me more and more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have high hopes for her and Mauricio. I do. Same, same. Mm-hmm. And Susan looked I, really extra cute this episode. She I did. Love the top and the jeans, mm-hmm. the ponytail. She looked, maybe it's because she was a little bit happy that yeah. she looked better. I don't know, but she looked really cute. I was like, oh, okay. I see you, Susan. I think. I think she relaxed when she got into that other hotel that had more space and could give her uh, room service with wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It always helps. Yes, it does. So she's packing up because today the day is the day that she's leaving. And she says she's very glad that she had the whole experience. And she is kind of sad that she's having to leave like right after she met somebody. Right. So Juan calls her and says, hey, meet me on the roof deck. And they have some champagne. This seemed like awkward. It was like they just like threw no a, like, a side table up there. There's no chairs. Yeah. They had to stand. And my yeah. lazy ass was like, where's the chairs? Because I'm not about to stand here, drink, and have a whole conversation while I'm holding my baby in one arm as well. I'm not doing it. I, yeah. She didn't even have yeah. a leash for Moo out no, there. No, uh-uh. Nope. So she says, um, she tells Juan, you know, yeah, I really liked Mauricio a lot. And um, I'm looking forward to get to know him more. And like, he's going to yeah. come to New York and we're going to get our calendars together. And he's like, ah, cheers to that. They do cheers. She's got to spruce on that Italian before he gets to New York <laughs> so they can communicate. <laughs> yeah. She's got to spruce up her Italian, Italian. Spanish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, Juan says, Susan, you've come such a long way. You're more open. And she goes, no. And he goes, I'm taking all the credit for changing you. And she was like, no, I I was okay. Whatever. She gets all mad. (laughs) And, um, then they go to her room and he helps her take her bags down. And she had a a carrier for Calliope, 
like a dog carrier, but she had mm-hmm. her in that side pouch pocket thing. Yeah, she probably just didn't want her to be in the carrier for a long period of time. So she just carried it's her a lot like of, a baby. A baby. It, yeah, a lot, it was the equivalent of, of those wrap things that moms yeah. use now. Yeah, Calliope yeah. just, of course, Calliope has her own. Of course she does. Yes. And I'll tell you what, one of my dogs would never sit in one of the side pouches for more than less than one second. They would jump straight out and run down the street. I couldn't see either of my, well, one of them's too damn heavy. They probably don't make one of his size, but I, <laughs> Stushi would look at me like, bitch, are you crazy? Why am I, take me out now. He would start talking shit and all that kind of stuff and I'd have to take him out of it. Yeah. And then bite James and blame James. Yeah. Girl, you just, there was a fight right when we started recording outside because he had to go potty in. <laughs> and James was the person who took him to go potty in. Well, I can kind of see a little bit of the fighting. I'm like, oh, there they go again. Fight. <laughs> so, so it just cracks me up. Uh, sushi <laughs> biting James. Uh, all right. So she says she gets in her car and she leaves. And she says she is hopeful. She has hope that she'll get to see Mauricio and it'll work out. I think it could be a great long distance relationship and they, can meet, up, they can meet up for traveling. Yeah. Um, Depending on, you know, his graphic artist job, if he could travel right. and work. And yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna reach out and see if they're still together. But, because you know what? For some odd reason, I don't see Susan wanting to be with some every, someone every single day. Yeah. 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 I Especially a long since distance might work that long. I think that would work very well for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. And, and him too. He's been single out. for a while. Yeah. Yeah. See what you can even find he, out. Even though he had that neck tattoo, he grew on me. Yeah. He's just so nice and mel- like mm. he's it's just very likable. I like yeah. him a lot. And like she said, together, he asked I hope Susan he, doesn't mess it up. Doesn't mess it up. Yeah. Like she said, he asked good questions. Yeah. He did. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh Stanika. All right. Mm-hmm. So we open up with the spoiled milk conversation. And uh, and she's going, Oh, oh, in America, this tastes like the part that we don't drink. Okay. Okay. And she says she's been told that it's rude not to eat everything on the table. And she's like, and I feel bad because I, I didn't like the milk and I don't like the couscous. But uh, she That's digs in there. That's a lot of pressure. She, That's a you, lot of pressure I, for her because she's had weight loss surgery. I mean, she can't physically true. eat a, a lot. And a there was point. a lot of, yeah, I was like, she. I hope they don't think she's rude if she can't finish her plate because she just can't. I totally forgot about that part of it. You're yeah. so right. Yeah. Sometimes she I'm is, good for something, Mary Payne. That's Every right. Every now and then. Every now and then. But she sees that somebody else has dug through the pile of food and found some lamb. And she's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to have to get some of that now. So yeah. she puts that lamb on her plate and she's like, mm, that couscous, that milk was terrible. But that lamb, that was so good. So she good. was feeling the hell out of that lamb. And see, I yeah. don't know what I would have eaten because I wasn't going to, I wouldn't drink the milk and I wouldn't eat the lamb. So they'd be pissed all the way off at me. Like, like couscous? I, I would go ahead. I would eat that. And, you mm-hmm. know, maybe there were some veggies somewhere over there, but I am not, I don't think I would have eaten the couscous because it was on top of the lamb. Oh, hmm. Well, I not eat a lamb. No, not doing it. Well, Mm-mm. it's just like me with, um, what is it that I can't eat? I can't eat veal. I will not eat veal. Baby no. cow. Nope. 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 Not doing it. Not doing that. Nope. Oh, Everybody out there that eats it, it's good for you. Everybody can be different. Okay. Just like yes. some people can like Twilight and some people don't. Everyone um, should. I love Twilight. <laughs> so the mom is asking Stanika, do you like Morocco? And uh, Nordine is asking and saying, yes, she says she really likes it. And she tells them she feels very welcome with their family. She's very appreciative, you know, for being there. And uh, the mom, so then Stanika says, ask the mom how she feels about me. Mm-hmm. And mom says, tell her I am happy and I like her. And she seems spontaneous and very smiley. She likes that. Yes. And she says she's very happy that Nordine finally found someone. I mean, I kind of wanted some more details on that. Like how many women has Nordine dated and it just not worked out? I'm like, is that a red flag that he hasn't? I I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know either. I like him too, but. I don't think they're together. I don't think they're together. No, because yeah. I've been like kind of peeping stuff on some of the Facebook Match Me Abroad groups. And I'm like, I don't think they're together anymore. I don't think so either. So Sadiqa says, um, ask your mom if she'd be okay if you had dual citizenship or if she wants you to live 
here always in Morocco. And he, and mom says, I'm fine with whatever he wants. Whatever makes him happy is fine. And Sadiqa starts laughing and he goes, okay, now wait a minute. Now she's trying to get rid of you real fast. So maybe I need to think about this. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, we thought that was going to be a bad scene from the previews. Like, Yeah. The, but of yeah. course, you know, they're always tricking us. So Every single time. Yeah. So she um, says, listen, I know that we're moving fast, but I kind of like where we're going. And mom says, I, I wish them everything. I wish them happiness, prosperity, harmony in the future, children and wealth. That's all. Yeah. I was like, wow. She, the mom seems totally cool. She was like in that yeah. fabric that Sonika bought. She's like, oh, she bought me this. You know, mm-hmm. what else can I get? Marry her. So That's right. We'll That's see. right. So... Um, the brother is talking to them and says, I'm glad about the things that are good between you, but you have to understand like marriage is hard and it's marriage yeah. life is not like before life. So it's not like dating and he's trying to give them some advice. And Sonika says, you know, I think this is all going really well, but you know, I wonder if these like few days and few dates together is going to be enough to sustain a long distance relationship. Uh, no, not that oh, long no. distance. You, you, no, uh, all of these people, I'm just like, they're so they far. find someone and they only see them for like two days in person. And then the other one's got to go home. Right. I don't know. And it's not like they can drive, like just get in the car, drive four hours and be there. No, not at all. Cause I'm sure a, tri- and a trip to Morocco has to be pretty expensive. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's got to sell just, a lot of houses. Yeah. She's got to do a lot of TikToks. A lot yes, of TikToks. Yes, she does. All right. We can move on to Mark and Huda. So mm-hmm. Huda... Um, they're in the car, they're driving, they're laughing and they're joking. And she's like, I like this outfit better. Like, basically you looked so goofy in that suit. I don't know who told you to wear it. (laughs) Nina. Nina. (laughs) And she's like, you look better like this. You look younger, like not quite so old. He's like, oh my gosh. Okay. I get it. (laughs) So they go to this. I couldn't figure out what this was. I was like, is this somebody's house? But it was a restaurant. I think so. It looked like it was a, yeah, that's true. They were the only people there. I don't know, but I was feeling the vibe. It was gorgeous. I just couldn't understand what yeah, it was. What it was. It wasn't like, I don't know. They didn't walk into a restaurant, but they walked in and there was this pool and these beautiful gardens and then they get food and um, maybe they ordered their food because if you think about it, the table was kind of low. It wasn't high enough for it to be like a rest. They couldn't even sit comfortably. They had to kind of like bend over like a, to get like their a food coffee. And, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I don't understand the whole thing, but she, um, she says, you know, yeah, when she first saw him, she didn't like him. She thought Mm -hmm. he was way too old for her, but now he's growing on her. And so they're eating and they're talking about, um, her work. And, you know, she says, yeah, I've had my business now four years. She explains how she Mm -hmm. came up with it. She says, yeah. And he goes like, I like that. I like you have your own business. She goes, yeah, I'm a strong, independent woman. What what do you want me to say? Pay my rent. Yeah. Good. Thank God you could pay 50%. Yes. That's that's all I need. Yes, he is most definitely, she's checking all those financial boxes for him right there. So she says, what did you think of my mom and my brothers? And she goes, oh, I liked being your mom. She goes, yeah, she's really chill. Yeah, my mom really liked you too. Now, here's something interesting that we talked about. When he went into their house, remember how he had to like step down two steps and then go down a tiny door? Mm -hmm. So I looked that up last night. Why does Morocco have tiny doors? Uh And they said the reason they have, they have a tiny door inside the big door. And sometimes it's regional. Um, and they mm-hmm. always do those. And then some some areas have doors where all the doors look exactly the same. So you can't okay. tell the wealth of the people inside. Because oh. in their in their culture and their religion, you're not supposed to brag or everyone should look the same. You shouldn't show your wealth by having an ornate door. But oh. the little the little door is a tradition that goes back to you should always bow your head when you walk in someone's home to show respect. And by making the little door, people were forced to bow their forced heads when they walked it. in, forced to bow their heads when they came in someone's door. And huh. a lot of these doors have two door knockers, a low one and a high one. And if you ring the top one, it symbolizes you're a man knocking on the door. And if you knock the low one, it symbolizes you're a woman knocking on the door so that maybe a man would not open the door for a woman he didn't for know woman. to be disrespectful. Yeah. They sure have a lot of uh, door door rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just yeah. put a sign on the door that says, please bow before you come in and I'll remember and I'll do it instead of having to bend yeah. all the way over. But okay. it's just like, 
on the other way, when Debbie went over to Morocco with Osama, um, same thing. Like whenever they would go anywhere, they would go and be like, here's a door inside of a door. And then the, yeah. it was always interior walls with no windows. And they do that right. to protect from the elements. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It's pretty huh. interesting, I think. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? thunk? That is hashtag journalism. So um, she says, um, you know, I, here's what I like about him. He's being a gentleman. I like that. And as they're sitting there, uh, he basically says, like, what's the deal here in Morocco? Like, is it okay to kiss on a second date? Because I'd like to mm-hmm. kiss you. Mm-hmm. And she says, <laughs> when we get married. And they laugh. We ain't buying that Huda. You look like you've been kissed before. They laugh and laugh. And he goes, no, for real. And she goes, yeah, that's for real. It's not allowed. Like, it's the religion. But I guess that's true because they're not allowed to, like, hug on the street or hold hands or anything. But they can't kiss in oh, private. They they make us look like horn dogs. I know. I'm like, you can't yeah. give a little kiss? A little kiss like, in look, private? Yeah. Hmm. I need to know, like, if your breath stinks and those are important mm. things. I mean, and yeah. what if you're not a good kisser? Some people don't right. want to marry a person who's not a good kisser. You don't have to train somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, she goes, let me ask you, after this, uh, has Nina set you up with other people? Are there other people you're supposed to meet? And he goes, oh, yeah, there are a couple of people I'm supposed to meet. And she goes, so you've met with me now twice, but you're mm-hmm. still going to go meet other people? Did you sign a contract? Do you have to do it? And he says, no, <laughs> I didn't sign a contract. I mean, other than with these camera crew, right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, she goes, if you didn't sign a contract, you can refuse. And he goes, uh, okay. And she goes, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but if you meet with someone after me, you won't meet with me again. Cause that's disrespectful. And it's about my dignity. And he just sits there and he goes, what now? And she says, is it normal in your culture that you would go on a second date with someone, but still go out and meet other girls? And he goes, yeah, it's very yeah. normal. <laughs> yeah. He says, yeah, yeah, that's how you, that's how you date. That's what dating is. Right. And, and it's and a dating show. And it's a dating show. Up for just like he did. I did. I thought there was a red flag for Huda. I thought she was being a little rigid. I and, do uh, too. And she says in her talking head, she goes, maybe he just sees women as objects and he could just pick one or the other, but I don't like this at all. And that's, he won't see me if he sees someone else. Well, we do kind of all pick who we want to be with, you know? I mean, sometimes people are dating casually and you date, I mean, he's not even like going on really big dates with these, like he's just meeting them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was coming on a little bit too strong for me with that. Totally. They had a blind date. and then, But, you know, then again, they're like in the car alone together. So I guess being alone together is okay. You're just not allowed to touch. But then who would know? Who would I, know, you know if you're like touching someone in the car? I mean, are there cameras in the car that go to their government to let them know? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. get it. Someone's going to explain it to us and then we'll feel dumb. But somebody will explain it to us. So he says, um, I really like Huda. And I don't know, maybe this is a Moroccan thing. Maybe mm. it's a Huda thing. But, it's a Huda uh, thing. Uh, maybe. He says, but how can I commit to Huda when I don't know the other matches that Nina has found? Like I've committed to meeting these other people. So I don't know yeah. what to do at this point. Now, I didn't like the way he phrased that. Because he's like, I, it's sort of like, I got to, I got to, maybe there's something, the grass is always greener, right? Like I met Huda twice. I like her, but... Maybe the next girl will be better, but then maybe Huda's going to dump me. So, yeah, he's got a decision to make there. I mean, I look at it as he traveled a very long way, and Mm -hmm. his goal was to go out on different dates to Mm -hmm. find a match. He this is only his second date. Let him follow it. Follow it. I mean, follow through. Even Stanika, when she went on her second date, she was still thinking about Nordine, and that's how she knew she wanted to be with him. So, I don't think there's anything wrong. To me, I'm like, look, I know you're going on on this other day, but all you're going to do is think about me because I'm that bitch right there. You yeah. know? Um, right. Let him and he knows it. and I, he knows they're not going to, like, make out or anything, so he just doesn't have to worry about sure. that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, girl, you tripping a little bit, so. Mm. And maybe it is because she's like, she says it's about my dignity. So maybe she's just like, I don't want to go out with two dates with you and have it be on TV and then you don't pick me or whatever. I don't know. It's interesting. Know. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. I mean, and and I haven't hated Mark the last couple of episodes he's been on. Same. 
I've been able to stomach him. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think we felt bad for him because they did him so wrong with that telling him to wear a suit. They yeah. did him dirty with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, and he's just I not think. acting like a jerk like he did like at the beginning when he first came on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So next time on Match Me Abroad, it looks like Michelle is going to do some energy and body work uh, with Dr. Michael. And they are like with some sort of healer who has him lay his head in her lap. And she rubs his head and then he starts crying. What's happening? Yeah, that's a, she's, what is it? What did she say? Uh, emotionally, he's got to get him emotionally naked. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's crying. That, I think that's the way to do it. Weird. So um, Mark says, um, Huda gave me an ultimatum. So we're going to meet up to agree to be exclusive. Now the editing is tricking us to make us think that she doesn't show up, but he says he's mm-hmm. going to meet up with her to say, tell her he wants to be exclusive. Okay. Okay. Because maybe he saw the pictures of the other girls and they didn't look good. I don't know. Perhaps. So Chad says, um, Maria and Beba were both great and he liked both of them. And then he says to Juan, like, what are these, what do they think about moving to the U S like, what, what are their thoughts on mm-hmm. that? And Juan's like, man, you have been on one date. Like you're moving too fast, <laughs> but okay. Hey, Harold, <laughs> I know, but again, isn't that the point? The point is, so, it is. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Harold goes on the train to see Michaela and he says he hasn't heard from her and she hasn't even confirmed that she's going to meet him at the train station. I'm not getting on a train, a boat, any motor vehicle to a person who has not responded. Yeah, I can't wait to see you. I'll meet you here. I'm not leaving the house. No. She's just going to give him an address and tell him good luck? I mean. I I don't think he has an address. Yeah. He says he he does worry he's going to get his heart broken. And I'm a little worried about it, too. Yeah. I, I mean, but we're worried almost every week. But I feel like extra worried this week. Yeah. With her kind of, it sounds like she's kind of ghosting him a little bit. I know, but he does have a camera crew with him. So that's what I have to keep remembering. He really isn't just like um, Curious George out there in the city alone. He really. um, (laughs) Looking for the man with the yellow hat. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Oh, I'm looking for the girl with yellow hair. Um, Yes. (laughs) Nordine takes Stanika on a date that looks very romantic and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he says, we need to talk about serious things now. And he says, I am 41. I don't want to waste time. I'm ready to move to the next step. And then we just see her saying like, well, I wonder what the next step is. Girl, you know what the damn next step is. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, cause I think Nora Dean really does want to go to the United States. He most definitely does. If none of them yeah. do, he does for sure. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think that. I, I don't know. From what we've seen her say on this Match Me Abroad Facebook group, mm-hmm. some of those Match Me Abroad Facebook groups are wild, y'all. Um, uh, but they make us look tame as fuck. They make us groups. look super nice. Yes, they do. Like girls with prayer cloths over our knees at church on the front row <laughs> because they go hard, hard. They go so hard. I've never, I haven't even commented on anything that they post. I'm like, I'm not getting into this. Nope, 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 nope. I got enough either. drama this week with uh, crazy posts, comments from people. What happened? Did something happen? Well, from that whole Housewives of Potomac fight video oh, that yeah. broke out. Yeah. And I interviewed Deborah. The week so before. So people have been leaving in, say, I had to turn off the comments to the post about her. That's how bad it got. Well, I sent you a note. It's like, you better go get Deborah. And you're like, it's not her fault. I was like, I didn't say it's her fault. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm like, it's not her fault. Yeah, they have been coming hard for her. People are like, why did you interview Big Bird and <laughs> accusing us of colorism? I'm like, have you not seen my ass? Like, it's been insane. I was like, I spent a large part of Saturday morning having to go delete, try to respond. And I said, you know what? Uh, no, I'm just turning off the comments. So then they start messaging me. So I can't even imagine what she's dealing with on her end. So it looks like they were um, up into club somewhere in D.C. And it looked like somebody else was trying to grab at her. And then she broke her fingernail off on this girl's hair. I, I couldn't know the girl broke her, so, broke her fingernail off in Deborah's hair. It, yeah. So from what I've heard is, is that it was uh, a preview of some active wear line that Giselle and Ashley are doing. Okay. And this was the after party that they all went to and cameras weren't rolling 
boy, all the times for the camera not to be rolling, they missed this fight. So Debra and Candace wow. are talking shit back and forth about the stuff with Chris last season. And this new girl, who I think is a, either a friend of Wendy's or Candace's, jumps in and hits Debra. So it they're going at it, and it kind of looks like the other girl won, but when you really look at it, she was doing a lot of hair pulling. And I couldn't make head or tails of that video. I was trying. It was a lot going on. And so then you see this woman in yellow who falls to the ground and everyone mm-hmm. thinks it's Giselle, but it's not even Giselle. She's another friend of someone on the show. But Deborah posted on her Instagram story, here's the fingernail I just pulled out from you pulling my real hair. Mm-hmm. And Deborah also said the other girl left in an ambulance. So I don't know. What is going so on? I'm trying to remember what oh. happened. So I guess that Deborah said last year that Chris was giving her a look or something. And that's what Candace is mad about that. So the two of them were yes having a conversation. And- a, he, a he did conversation about that. Yeah, and so the editing was pretty wrong last season, how they didn't show every, capture everything. So it kind of looked like Deborah was lying. But if you uh-huh. go and listen to my interview, she explains everything from okay. that scene. Okay. And, I mean, Chris flirts with everybody. He just does. Yeah, he yeah, does. He and works. I mean, like I yeah. said, I I knew him from back in the day uh, when he managed that restaurant that was in the building where I worked in. And he was... um. I wasn't flirty with me because I'm like an old lady, but he was super, super like very nice and very easy mm-hmm. to talk to and very chatty and would tell you anything. Spill all sorts mm. of tea. Yeah. Well, damn. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I need to interview Chris. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, Chris, I saw um, Karen in the train station coming from New York um, back to uh, D.C. And she told me this, that and the other. And she says, you need to get off Twitter. He was like, ah, <gasps> Karen. And he just started telling me all sorts of stuff about Karen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, he oh, just spilled Chris it. got all yeah. the tea. Yeah, it was probably only about the second season at that time that they were on. Okay. So, yeah, so probably he probably doesn't do that anymore. Um, he is um, he is the manager, general manager of a restaurant now that's, I think, in the Baltimore area. Somebody posted a picture the other day with him that they but just it, happened it to be at this the, restaurant and see him. I don't think it's at the same place that he was last season, though. No, he was um, the manager of the top of the Hotel Washington, which is the best view in D.C. of the White House. It's the top of the Hotel Washington, and then you're, like, practically on top of the White House. Um, And he was the manager there, and now he's the manager of someplace out there, Maryland somewhere. I don't know. I can't keep up. He switches jobs a lot. Sounds like it. And then he has a personal chef and personal chef in business, too. Yeah. so. So Deborah and Candace are not cool is what I'm hearing. No. No, no, which they is were fighting, why fighting at the after were, party. They was they were going at it hard, and then Candace picks up a bottle like her no fighting ass was really gonna throw it. I'm like, girl, stop trying to be hard. We all know you're a crybaby, so they're all they're all gonna be in trouble, trouble. Yeah, I can't wait. I need this season to drop like yesterday at this point. But they're still filming yeah. though, so it'll be a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think they finished it up. Oh, okay. So maybe yeah, it was the I closing think that was party. Finale. Oh, like the closing party mm-hmm. with somebody else. Oh, I got to be launching something at a closing party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's been Real Housewives of Potomac Corner, everybody. Um, go, <laughs> go, uh, go listen to Keisha's podcast, The Libra Lounge with Keisha, and follow her on Instagram. And you can get all the tea about Deborah. And she also interviewed, don't forget, our favorite extreme sisters, Patrix and Patrika. Did I get yes, it? You got ah. It. Love those girls. And um, please follow us over on Instagram at Pink Shade Pod. And later this week, we will have, I'll have a recap with Kimberly of 90 Day Before the 90 Days. And this Thursday, I'm going to have Ryan Bailey on to talk about um, a lot of Bravo things. And guys, about um, last week's episode that was supposed to be with Sarah Colonna, the Barely Bravo breakdown, Sarah had a power outage in her neighborhood of her Verizon. So like right Um, before we were supposed to, we were already recording late on Thursday like her internet they had no internet in their neighborhood so that's why we couldn't record but uh we've got ryan bailey coming on this week and sarah colonna coming on the next week and then in the week after that i've got ben and ronnie from watch what crappens julie and brandy so a lot of good guests coming on that thursday spot so make sure you pay attention if you're into bravo and pop culture that's what we're doing on thursdays and keisha is there anything exciting coming up on the libra lounge you want to tell me about Not that I know of, just me running my mouth per usual. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that's what's good about the Libra Lounge, you guys. And uh, gird your loins because she lets it all out over there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what I say? Had your kids, had your wife. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I will talk to you next week. Matchmaker. That's it. That's all you get from that song. It doesn't want to give you more than that. Okay, goodbye.